Since people often ask for references, I'm opening with the references here to reassure you that the main references are available. And like I build my work on these references, I want to tell you all that uh, all of us build our work on the ancestral lands of the indigenous. So the University of Alberta respectfully acknowledges that we're located on Treaty 6 territory, a traditional gathering place for diverse indigenous peoples, including the Cree, Blackfoot, Métis, Nakota Sioux, Iroquois, Dene, Ojibwe, Saltu, Anishinaabe, Inuit, and many others whose histories, languages, and cultures continue to influence our vibrant community. Here at the University of Alberta, which sometimes can feel like the University of Anxiety, which is why we're going to address the stress today by looking at some of the history of stress research. They'll learn a writing hack with which you'll be able to unleash some superpowers. So let's start with the, the video where we learn about the four F words and nuts. So it all begins with Walter Cannon's cat. Walter noticed that when he was feeding his cat, if he startled the cat, the cat didn't feel like eating any longer because the cat would enter into freeze, fight or flight mode. And then later on, other scientists added the freeze response. So the fight, flight, or freeze forms the biological stress response with hands noticed here that this could be triggered by positive and negative events. And in the 1960s, Shelley Taylor added a social response. He said that some tend and befriend or they fawn. So that gives us the fight, flight, freeze, or fawn response, which is also known as the four F words. Now, in the short term, if you are experiencing the stress response, it's great because it can save your life. If you keep experiencing it without any break, uh, you will basically f -f 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 fizzle out. So we need some kind of warning system to warn us when we might start fizzling out. And that's where we all have to admit that each one of us has an allergy to nuts. NUTS is an acronym from Sonia Lupin, and what she points out is that when we experience something new, something unpredictable, if something threatens our ego or if our sense of control is lost, we might start to feel some negative stress. And if you feel that negative stress for too long, then it's going to be very costly to your health and well-being. Writing can also make us feel nuts because we have to produce something new. There's a blank page. We question our competence and we fear judgment. So what can you do? We have to reframe the negative stress of writing to take action, regain some control, maybe make writing feel more positive and move into flow. So that's where we have this writing hack. And this writing hack is known as free writing. There's many great pivotal moments in, in history that link to free writing. Just recently, the anthropology department contacted me and said that they have discovered the first instance of free writing. Isn't that amazing? Classics department has finally explained the fall of Rome with the discovery of a new legal document, a decree that says no more free writing. See what happens when you ban free writing? And the history department tells us that the last words of William Wallace were, I want my free writing. And if you don't believe William Wallace, you can also believe some students. So these are some collections of students' uh, notions of free writing. They really like it in general. Most students like it. They treat it as a useful tool, helps them come up with some good ideas, gives them confidence, and they feel like they can get their thoughts on the page. And not everyone will react this way. There are a few students that sometimes react with some resistance. For instance, there's a student who says, I always need a plan. I need structure. I don't like writing without a clear outline. I'm not a hippie. Others are much more brief. I made my point in 30 seconds. Mission accomplished. And others are just all about failure. It doesn't work for me. It never works for me. Nothing ever works for me. It works for my sister, but not for me. 
If you're wondering what works or doesn't work, we're talking about free writing. So let me list the traits of free writing so you and your students can use this. Free writing is when you write nonstop without self-censorship for a set period of time or for as long as you want. Writing without worrying about grammar, punctuation, or spelling. You write with a topic or without a topic. You write whatever's on your mind, even if nothing is on your mind. Quite literally, if nothing's on your mind, you can write, nothing's on my mind, this free writing is weird, blah, 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 blah. And you can write B-L-A-H, you can write blah. You can direct the writing in a focused way or let it flow in a stream of consciousness way without any judgment, dude. No judgment whatsoever. One time I was free writing. I started free writing about monkeys juggling coconuts. I didn't know why. I didn't judge it. I just kept writing without deleting, without erasing, but just moving forward. Because you just keep writing, just keep writing, just keep writing. And as a Film fact, Disney Pixar's Finding Nemo ran in my house for about five years straight when my kids were younger. So for my kids, it was just keep watching. And if you have kids, just put them in front of the TV. They'll watch it for 20 hours straight. That helps you raise your kids that way. And then for the remaining four hours of the day, you can teach them free writing. And here's a topic you can give your kids. This is what I give my kids or my, and my students as well. It's a topic that is ask you to write about a time when you felt at one with the universe in the zone or in a state of flow. Remember a time when you were in a state of flow and then describe it in as multi-sensory a way as possible. If you don't know what flow is, it's a term popularized by this fellow, which if you know how to pronounce his name, if you practice it and can learn it, you'll reach the highest state of flow possible. In colloquial terms, flow is known as being in the zone. It's when you're immersed in an activity that requires skill and that challenges you and you feel at one with what you're doing. It. And I can relate a time when that happened to me. When I first started playing basketball, I couldn't bounce the ball. My hand was stiff. The ball would hit me in the face. It was horrible. But over time, I didn't have to think about how my body was moving and I just started bouncing the ball it became like a natural reflex. And then one time in a game, everything went perfectly, it seemed, in the sense that I was passing, I was shooting, I was scoring baskets. And that's being in flow. When for a moment or for a brief period or a longer period, everything just seems to click. Some people get into flow through art, others through music. There's many different ways you can get into flow. And flow itself is a great stress buster. So when you're in that state, you tend to de-stress. The other reason why I explore this topic is because I want to associate free writing with getting into a state of flow. Sometimes students don't have a moment of flow in, your li in their life or they can't come up with one. So that's no problem. You can just adjust the topic about a time when you're happy or when you felt positive. And that's because I want students to think of a free writing happy place. So they're free writing or they're writing about a time when they felt positive or happy serves as a reference so they can reframe future stress events. So I include this advice with the assignment, which is whenever stressed, recall the flow event, remind yourself that you're up to the challenge, whatever the test, exam, essay is, and you can use that as an opportunity for you to get into a state of flow. So you can unleash your superpowers. Flow, free writing is great for tackling writer's block. So instead of waiting for ideas to come, you can write yourself into ideas. It's great for kickstarting a study session or just about anything. For instance, I had some students who were stressing about an upcoming chemistry test. So I suggested they free write for five minutes about everything they learned about chemistry. And they were able then to turn that into a longer study session because they were having a hard time getting motivated to study. So it's a way to kickstart things, whether it's generating a few ideas or writing a novel. Some use free writing for anti-anxiety. They let out all the thoughts swirling around in their head, put it on paper, and then they just let it go. Others can use it for encouraging participation. So you give a topic, have students free write for a few minutes, and then more people are prone to communicate and with one another in the discussion time. What we're trying to do is teach that it's fine to make mistakes, take risks, to experiment, because writing and learning can be messy. So students need to learn that. It's not about being perfect all the time, but letting them have space to grow and explore. 
Some profs use this for emotional exploration. So you give a topic, you want students to explore something from an emotional side or even reflect on their own lives. And they can use that free writing to build into papers or assignments like reflection papers that are marked. And remember, you might feel uh, experience some resistance from students and it's fine because you can tell students free writing doesn't work for everyone all the time because it doesn't have to work. You reward the attempt. It's like working out. Free writing is an exercise. You can also share your own struggles with writing and communicating because we want to demystify writing. Sometimes we have this idea that writing starts out perfect or that professors always write perfectly. Uh, and if you tell them your own struggles, it's a way to build the community and share with one another. Encourage students to try again. If you have students who struggle, because sometimes students do struggle because in their mind, they have the voices that they imagine of teachers critiquing them or their own fears or worries about their punctuation or spelling. So the first time it can be hard for them to let go, but if they keep at it, they'll find that they can improve with their free writing and allow more of their voice and ideas to come out. You can adapt it for different purposes. And it's very important to treat free writing as one of many tools, because even if it doesn't work for you, you have it in your toolbox and you can use it in the future. You can also reassure your students. Ken McCrory was a big uh, advocate of free writing. And he says, good writing is formed partly through plan and partly through accident. Whereas Peter Elbow, who's also a great supporter of free writing, he says that producing writing is not like filling a pool once, but getting the water to flow until it runs clear. However, the biggest advocate of free writing in the 20th and 21st century is probably Arnold Schwarzenegger, who said, Free writing is simply spectacular. So superpowers of free writing allows you to have no more nuts because it's a reliable practice. You can embrace the discoveries. There's no threat to your ego because it's low or no stakes and you decide what to do with it. You decide to hide it, to share it with others, to develop it further because we're reframing writing. Instead of it being a stressful thing, it can be a challenge that you embrace. So you allow the free writing uh, work as play where you can be vulnerable and explore. You can also treat the free writing as an experiment in reciprocity. So reciprocity is a concept I came across when I was a kid talking to an Inuit artist. And she said she didn't approach her art like in a linear way with a, a blueprint, like an architect, and then you build the house. Instead, she was working with the stone that she was carving and she'd meditate on it and then start carving and metaphorically, the stone would speak to her and she'd see, well, what kind of animal will want to be unleashed? And that can happen when you're free writing too. You start writing, you don't know what's going to come out necessarily all the time, but what comes out might be something you can work with. So you allow for that creative process to, to happen. And the final point here is about synchronicity. And even those students who don't like free writing and those who do like free writing, they really appreciate this idea of synchronicity and non-synchronicity. So what this means is when you're free writing, you might notice that sometimes your thoughts are slow and your writing is fast. So you tend to ramble or your thoughts are too fast and your writing is too slow and you're trying to keep up. And when students realize this, again, even those few who don't like free writing, they're like, they see that the writing is not a problem because of the topic or the teacher or because writing in and of itself, but because maybe they're not synchronizing their thoughts with their expression. But free writing is a way to do that. You can practice free writing to get your thoughts to align and synchronize with your writing output. But the best part of free writing, of course, is that it's free. 